Hi guys, my name is Dane. Uh, a little bit about me. I uh, have always hated sports, okay? I just do. They're not very interesting to me. I'm sorry if you do like sports. Nothing against you. That's cool. Um, you know, it's just not something that I've been into. I've always been bad at sports, okay? I have always have been. Uh, it's probably why I got into skateboarding, you know? Because um, I could just kind of do my own thing. and I didn't have to wear uncomfortable pants and get yelled at in my face by some coach. Not for me, you know? Um, and the last time I played a team sport was in sixth grade. Um, my mom's boyfriend made me. He was like this like really crazy sports fanatic. And he's just like, a young man needs to be playing sports. You're joining a team. So I joined a baseball team, a local baseball team. Um, and I hated it. I was just so afraid. I was like, man, I don't want to go out there. I just, I, I, I don't like baseball. I just feel like I'm going to be bad. And I'll never forget my very first game when I was very first up to bat, okay? Walk up to the plate. Got my little, my little bat, okay? I was a little short, just, you know, heavy kid just out there, just doing his best. All the other kids just seemed like enormous. I was just terrified. And then, bam, first throw goes, I swing, strike one. Okay, it happens. Hey, first time, you know, what are you, you going to do? Then second ball comes down. I swing, strike two. Ouch. Okay, but then, man, something incredible happens. The third ball flies. I swing as hard as I can. And guess what? Miss, strike three. <laughs> You're out. I was done. The whole, like, all my team was, like, super frustrated. And here's the thing. This wasn't just a one-time thing. This happened every single time I was up to bat. Where, like, the coach would call my name, like, all right, Perzak, you're up. And the whole dugout would be like, oh, no, not Dane, anybody else. And I'd strike out, and they'd just be groaning and yelling. And I was like, every single time. I just couldn't do it, okay? I don't know what was wrong with me. Um, and it was awful. That feeling was awful. I just constantly felt like I just failed. I, I just felt like a disappointment. And this is, like, the first time in my life where I was like, man, I'm, like, my actions are letting other people down. And this is hard. And so I quit because I didn't want to feel that anymore. I didn't want to keep feeling like this failure time and time again every time I went to the bat. Uh, no, not for me. I'll do so anything else. And a lot of you guys have probably felt that way too, you know, where you feel like you're not good enough. You find yourself never wanting to try because you're afraid you might fail and not be good at it. You don't want to feel like a disappointment. But what if I were to tell you that that doesn't have to be where the story ends when it comes to failure, that maybe God actually has something more for you when you fail? That he, he can actually bring something out of it. So we're going to dive into, we're going to look at my boy Peter in the Bible, okay? Um, now, Peter, if you were at camp or if you read about him before, uh, you know that, man, Peter, uh, his story begins when Jesus sees him fishing. He was a fisherman. And Jesus says, hey, drop your nets, leave everything, and follow me. So Peter follows Jesus for years, sees all his miracles, his, hears all his teachings, sees all these amazing things. Um, and then, uh, you know, years later, on the night before Jesus is crucified, Jesus is having what's called the Last Supper, this last meal with his disciples. And Peter's there. And Jesus is telling them, he's like kind of preparing them, like, hey, I'm about to go get killed. And so here in Matthew 26, uh, 31 through 35, so on the way, they say, tonight all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I've been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee, and I will meet you there. But Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus, I'm always going to be by your side. Jesus replied, Peter, I tell you the truth. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. You're saying you die, you're ready to die with me? No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. So later that night, Jesus is dragged before the high council, okay? And everyone around is calling for him to be killed. He's being spit on. He's being beat. They're mocking him. And Peter is just watching all of this happen. He's kind of in this outer court. And it says, meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. A servant girl, a servant girl comes up to him and says to him, hey, you were one of the, you were one of the ones who was with Jesus, the Galilean. Isn't that you? But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't even know what you're talking about, he said. Strike one. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him standing and said to those standing around, hey, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it. He's afraid. He doesn't want to be found out. This time with an oath, I don't even know the man, he said. Strike two. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your accent. And Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Strike three. Peter failed. He denied Jesus. And you just imagine there's probably a dugout of angels watching in heaven. Just, oh, Peter, what are you doing? 
You fit the strike, man, that's three times. You had three chances. And suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And he went away weeping bitterly. He went away, he was crushed. He failed, he knew he let Jesus down. And here's the thing we need to know about failure. Um, the thing, something we need to be aware of, man, how it affects us is that fair, failure will make you want to run away. Man, don't forget that. That's kind of my first point. Failure will make you want to run away. Run away. You know, when we talk about failing, yes, you know, we, we, we can talk about the smaller things that we've messed up, you know, missing my swing in baseball or, you know, failing a test or failing your first driver's test, which I did. I failed my first driver's test. Drove right up onto a sidewalk, <laughs> like immediately. The guy's like, yeah, turn around. You, you failed. I was like, dang it. Um, or, you know, not making the cut in a play or on a team. Man, there's all these different ways that we fail. Um, but there's this, this, these kind of times that we fail that runs even deeper, um, that affects us so much more and weighs so much heavier. So for me, man, I fail all the time. I, I fail as a friend. I'm a bad friend. I fail to be a good son or a good brother to my family members. I mean, I've, in my past, I've failed as a boyfriend. I fail as a husband all the time. I failed as a Christian. Man, I fail every single day as a Christian. <laughs> I'm a sinner. I sin every day. Man, I'm constantly failing, feeling like I'm not good enough, like I'm never going to be like Jesus. Man, I failed so many times as a youth pastor. I can't even tell you how many times I've failed. Uh, you know, when I first started my job as a youth pastor, youth lead here at Palm Avenue, um, it's almost five years ago now. Um, and I was just so absolutely terrified of failing when I first started. Uh, I never worked with youth before. I didn't really know if I could do it. I didn't know what I was doing. There's still days I don't know what I'm doing, but especially back then. Um, I was just so insecure. I remember my very first night when we kind of opened the Palm Campus, eight students showed up. One girl just started crying, clung to her mom. She's like, please don't leave me here. And I'm just like, yeah, welcome to youth. <laughs> we got pizza. <laughs> um, and I was just feeling like, man, I was just so inadequate. Like I was just going to disappoint everybody around me. Um, and six months in, I wanted to quit. I was, so conf I was just so convinced that my boss, Pastor Fredo, was going to call me into his office and be like, yeah, man, big, this was all a big mistake. This isn't for you. You're done. Um, and I started to believe it, man. It was six months in. I remember it was June 2018. Uh, there was about 20 students there, um, and it was supposed to be like this big, powerful message, okay, where we had this, this canvas um, up front, and all the students came up to like write their, their sins on this canvas. And the parents were there, for some reason, in the back watching this also, and they came forward with like this red paint to cover the sins on this canvas. And so we had this song, Reckless Love, playing, and I was supposed to come out and give this like powerful word. Okay, here's my time. Be like, yes, this is the reckless love of God that because of Jesus' sacrifice, man, your sin and your shame is covered by the blood. All you have to do is, man, reach out to him. That's what I wanted to sound like, okay? How it really came out, I walked up there, I was like this sweaty disaster. I was like, yeah, you know, you got the blood. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, hey, if anyone wants to, you know, follow Jesus, uh, this guy, you know, raise your hand. So I, you know, invited people to raise their hands and they're all just staring at me. <laughs> Everyone's just staring at me. No hands are raised. And I'm sitting there sweating like, okay, then we'll just, we'll call it. <laughs> Head to group, whatever. Um, and I just felt like such a failure. I was like, man, I had this opportunity to tell kids about Jesus and I failed. I messed it up. Um, and I wanted to quit so, so bad. And this is what Peter does. And I think this is why I relate to Peter so much in the story, man. When Peter fails Jesus, you know, right after this, Jesus is crucified. He's killed. He's gone. And so Peter, the one who left fishing to follow Jesus, gives up on what God has called him to. The past few years is out the window. And guess what he does? He goes back to fishing. He goes back to fishing, what he was doing before he met Jesus. Look, it's there in John 21. Peter said, I'm going fishing. I told you, it's right there. So he goes fishing. The other disciples are like, oh, we'll come too. So they went out in a boat, all right? So this time, you know, uh, spoiler alert, Jesus had come back from the dead, but they weren't aware of it. So they're out fishing, and they catch nothing all night. They're out all night fishing. So man, he fails Jesus. Jesus is killed. He goes back to fishing what he knows, and he's failing at that too. And you just got to imagine the hopelessness. But then at dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. And he called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? <laughs> Knowing they've been out there for hours. No, they replied, no, we haven't caught any fish. So he tells them, okay, try the, try the other side, try something else. And they catch all these fish. And the disciples, uh, they, you know, they say to Peter, hey, it's the Lord, it's Jesus. And when Simon Peter hears this, he puts on his tunic and jumps into the water, swimming back towards the shore. 
The others stayed in the boat, boat, pulled it all in, and when they got to the shore, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Man, Jesus was there ready to greet them. Not, you know, hey, Peter, remember that time you messed up? Man, remember that time you guys failed? No, they're doing encourage them. And so, man, the second point I want you guys to know is that we got to see failure as an opportunity to move forward, not go backward. See it as this opportunity to move forward, but not go backwards. And that's where I was at, you know. So when I was about to quit, you know, like six months in, you know, luckily I had this community around me speaking truth into my life, um, you know, encouraged me. Hey, keep going. Obviously, I'm still working here. Obviously, I didn't quit. Um, so I kept going. And um, I was, but I was feeling very discouraged. It was like my least favorite Wednesday night of all time. And then uh, over a year later, I was at summer camp 2019. Um, and these leaders come up to me and like, hey, Dan, we just want to share this cool story with you. Um, one of our students shared in our cabin time. Uh, she said her first night at youth, um, she just felt hopeless. She felt alone. Uh, but she showed up. Um, and she said, um, she felt God for the very first time and gave her life to Christ, but just didn't tell anybody until now. And do you know what night it was? The night <laughs> that I thought was the worst night of all time, that I thought, no, there's no way God's moving here. And I heard this and I was like, I was blown away. I was like, I was there. There's no way she heard God speak that night. That's crazy. I was there. I thought I had failed. And what was just so incredible about this is I, I just kind of realized that, man, in our failures, man, I can fail, I can be terrible, I can suck, and God's still going to move. God's still working, even when I can't see it or understand it. That God can actually move still in my failures. And if I had quit, I never would have seen it. I never would have known how he moved. So, man, uh, my last kind of point is that, man, just because you fail, it doesn't mean you're a failure. This isn't your identity. Just because you fail, that doesn't mean you're a failure. God has more for you. So we continue. So Jesus is back from the dead. Peter, he's back. He goes, he goes to the beach on the shore. And after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question a second time. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And then a third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is incredible. Man, Jesus asked him three times and gives Peter the opportunity to redeem himself. Man, God is a God of redemption. That we're, not, he does, he, we're not the sum total of all of our failures. And he reminds him of what he's been called to. And not to quit and give up, man, but to go out and continue the work that God had for him. The man, and I, there's just so much encouragement that even when you fail, then God is going to be there to pick you up and point you in a new direction and have grace for you. Then no, man, it, Romans 8.28 says, God is working all things for the good of those who love him. Even when we fail and mess up, man, God can still work something in our life. Yes, failure is something that's going to happen. We all fail. We all fail all the time. Man, we're in it together. But those failures don't have to define you. Man, God sees you as so much more than the mistakes that you've made. So don't let this fear of failure stop you from becoming what God has called you to do and the life that he's called you to live. So get out there. Get out there and fail. Fail some more. Failing's awesome, man. God's going to show up. We're all failing together, figuring it out. You're not in it alone. And just, just, you don't need to be afraid. Just remember in times that you fail, to man, turn to other people, turn to God and know that they, uh, he's gonna meet you in that. Man, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And that's my prayer for you guys tonight. Man, don't be afraid of the failure. Know that God is with you and there's power and love and self-discipline for you tonight. Love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good one.